and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you this onion still life I painted, while also sharing some acrylic painting tips along the way and showing you just how I made this. I hope you'll enjoy, and if you do, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me some comments down below. For this painting, I used the Matisse Structure Acrylics, which I recently did a full review on my channel on these acrylics, so I'll leave that linked up in the description box and in the iCards as well, in case you guys are interested. Let me know down below in the comment section, what is your favorite brand of acrylic paint? Because I would love to hear your thoughts, I'd love to start a discussion with you guys, I would always love to hear from you. Now, if you recognize this painting, it's likely from that review video or my How to Varnish an Acrylic Painting video, which I'll leave linked up as well in case you guys were interested because I used this painting in part uh, as part of a demonstration for that video on how to varnish an acrylic painting, but also in that video I share with you some tips on how to choose which acrylic varnish is right for you. So be sure to check that video out because I think that you might find it interesting and helpful. Now as always, I will leave in the description box a full list of materials and supplies as well as some related videos. Now. With all of that out of the way, let's get right on into the tutorial. I'm starting off with a toned beige canvas, and for the background, I'm just roughly blocking in where I want the colors to go. I'm using some pretty rough, expressive brush marks here. I'm not really taking the effort or the time to blend them out at all because Number one, it adds to the overall texture, but number two, because a lot of that will get covered up when I come in with my sponge technique on top. It's been my experience that it's better to have that base layer down first, in opposed to coming in straight away with your sponge, because you really are applying too thin of a layer of paint with the sponge to get good coverage. This can also result in poor adherence to the substrate if you're not careful. So make sure that you wring that sponge out very well of any and all excess water. Because remembering that working with acrylics, water is the solvent. So because you're picking up such a thin layer of paint on that sponge, when it mixes with the water that's already in the sponge, it is possible to over dilute or begin to undermine some of that paint. So just make sure that you've really gotten all the extra water that you can out of that sponge before you begin. I may also come in with a layer of gloss glazing liquid to act as a workable fixative. This is by the brand Golden. It's, it's used really for um, glazing traditionally, but it also works as a sort of acrylic workable fixative in this application to lock those layers down before moving on to more layers, just so I'm 100% sure that they won't lift back up as I layer and glaze and later even varnish the painting. This is a technique that I implement quite a bit whenever I'm using my sponge method. This background is somewhat signature to me and I love to do it. It's a reoccurring theme in my work, whether I work in pastel or acrylic, what have you. I just feel it has so much energy and passion and fire. I'm able to achieve many layers with this technique, which utilizes optical blending, and it's pretty unique to my style of painting. So I went really colorful yet earthy for the background color selection because I wanted it to feel like a celebration of life. I was just so pleasantly surprised that that onion had sprouted in my kitchen. I just remember thinking how beautiful that was, to me at least, that there was some life in my house. There was something green and alive and growing in my kitchen unbeknownst to me, especially since it was the middle of winter when I found it. and. It was such a seemingly unexpected place for it to sprout, you know, in this dark corner in my pantry, bereaved of sunlight and soil or water. And so I really wanted to capture those feelings of just feeling very fortunate, I guess, and feeling excited about new life. And it just goes to show that something beautiful really can grow even in the most seemingly unexpected places. To me at least, this onion is beautiful. At least the fact that 
you know, in the middle of winter, in this dark corner in my pantry, something green had sprouted to life, um, even, even though I was completely unaware of it. Now for the main part of that onion, you know, the real meaty part of the onion, I'm blocking in with local colors that I see represented within the onion. Beige, ochres, peach, and even pale greens. Then later on, I'll come in and glaze colors over to build depth and realism. Glazing greens, yellows, blue even in some places. Really look for the colors, see them, and then add them to your painting. To do my glazes, I'm using the Gloss Glazing Liquid by Golden, uh, as I've already said. I like the Liquitex glazing medium as well, but I find that it just dries too fast most times, and I have difficulty blending it and getting it smooth before it dries on me in most applications. But I have some experience with it, and it does make really nice, rich jewel-like glazes that are very hard and durable. What you do not want to ever do is use water to do your acrylic glazes because as I've already mentioned in acrylic paint water is the solvent. So you're underbinding that paint when you use water. It's a big no-no. It's just improper technique. Even if it works or seems to work in the short term, the paint film is unstable. You've compromised the integrity of it. So when you go to layer on more paint or go to varnish your finished painting, the paint may lift back up or even crack later on down the road or peel off in a big sheet like bologna if there's extreme temperature or humidity changes. So it's better to do your glazes properly with a medium. It's very, very important. It'll allow for better adhesion to the substrate and smoother application of those paint glazes as well. Because when you use water, uh, a lot of the time you'll have a tendency to get very streaky, bubbly, unattractive glazes. So use that glazing liquid. It really is going to make a huge difference. And if you do your painting right a lot of the time, you won't be able to tell the difference between an acrylic painting that's done skillfully and with proper technique than the difference between that and an oil painting. They'll look virtually indistinguishable. Now, acrylic paint is kind of like a plastic, the binder, so it does have a uniquely um, different kind of distinct look to it from oil paint, the overall finish of it. It, it is a little bit different, but from a distance, you definitely wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And I think the untrained eye certainly wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But you can achieve those really rich jewel-like glazes that are often thought of uh, you know, as synonymous with oil painting technique. Now for the skin of the onion, I'm really using my observational skills to not only record the colors I see represented, but also the texture. That papery skin that's crunchy and brittle, dry, but also shiny and smooth at the very same time. It's very interesting. It's really about rendering those little veins, almost like what a leaf has, but also the crinkles and the crackles of the texture and how the light plays with that texture, bouncing off the high points and shadows in the low points. So keep that in mind and also consider your light source, what direction the light is coming from and how it will play with your subject will, will differ greatly. Here I'm painting from life, so I'm making up a lot of this from my own imagination, the background for example and the napkin, but I've got the advantage of studying this onion up close to really observe the detail. Another thing to keep in mind about the skin is that it's semi-translucent. 
So we can utilize glazes to really bring realism to the illusion and because the skin is reflective, I'm being sure to add a cast reflection of the napkin onto the bottom of that onion as well and as well as both of high and low highlights on the onion itself according to their light sources. And all of this will contribute to a realistic illusion. So I'm just coming in and repainting that napkin because I wasn't happy with it. I really didn't like the direction that I had originally taken with it, so I changed my mind. To do that, I let everything dry thoroughly and then gessoed over it. The gesso provides good coverage as well as some tooth so that the paint can stick better. It really gives it something to grab onto. And then once I had a fresh clean slate to work with, I then readjust it to my liking. And that's one of the things that I love about acrylic paint is just how forgiving of a medium that it really is. You can easily go over and correct any mistakes. I went simple yet chromatic for that shadow under the onion, tying in the plum from the background for color harmony but also to achieve a very lively shadow. I finished it off by adding some golden bronze metallic embellishments and that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on your way out. It really helps out my channel. And as always, have a great day guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.